All right, so today I've got something totally different. So I just thought I would make an update video to kind of share what I've been working on because I haven't been working on YouTube videos recently. So what I have here is this is a open source project I'm working on called LumaDub. And to explain what it does, is, it's kind of hard to explain. So it is a open source universal analog transcoder and line doubler. So it will take any 15 kilohertz signal and convert it to any other 15 kilohertz signal or line doublet. So it is a Luma-based line doubler. So Luma for Luma-based, dub for doubler. What it does is right now it accepts the, the core of the circuit is right here. It's this little rectangle here. And I'm trying to keep the bill materials under like between 10 and 15 bucks. So this can be really cheap and really versatile. And the input stage chip is the ADV7280A, which is uh, the same or similar chip used on the Core U. It's the same chip used on the RetroTink 2X and presumably the uh, Eons um, Super 64 thing. And that handles the digitization and... This chip handles digitization and line doubling. And this is the ADV7391. This chip handles encoding. So it converts the digital bus back to analog. So this allows me to, it accepts composite, component, and S-video. And it can output composite, S-video, component, RGB, and VGA. So it cannot do, this core circuit here can do everything but RGB on the input, and it can do everything output. But it can only take in a 15 kilohertz signal, so only 480i and 240p input. It cannot accept a 480p input. There are ways to add RGB. Um, I've been investigating that. I'm pretty sure it's on the chip, but analog devices has been basically impossible to work with, so I'm going to have to use an external method like this transcoder circuit I've got here. This is based off of uh, jam lander, um, jams, uh, jam coder circuit right there. So what I have is I have two Raspberry Pi Picos. This one is controlling the entire thing. It's just doing I squared C commands. And this one is just acting as a debugger that's on the board. And I have a bunch of chips. I have uh, chips, excuse me. I have a bunch of switches here to control different functions. And these are reserve ones. And then up here, these are voltage regulators. So the core of the circuit is really this part here, and it can be made much smaller. The whole thing uses about a watt. So let's let's show it in action, what I've done with it. Um, it, it can convert. So right now I have component running into it and RGB running out of it. So you can see it there on the D9, and it's 15 kilohertz. So I have it set to auto mode. So as soon as I, I'm going to disconnect the sync from YPBPR there. This is just a little test pattern generator. I have a N64 running to the composite. So I have both component and composite connected. It's currently running component. Whenever I disconnect this, you will see it automatically locks on to the composite input signal. So I have Pokemon Snap on the N64 running here. So this is just doing a conversion and pass through. So the latency is like some of the order, to, order of magnitude between thousandth of a second and ten thousandths of a second. It's, it's somewhere in there. It's stupid short. It's really fast. I can use uh, Duck Hunt on this, both standard and line doubling mode. So right now it's just passing through. You get the scan lines because it's 240p on a CRT. But um, I'm going to toggle this switch, which is a line doubler mode. And watch what happens. You will see it switches to 480p there. So... This is also low enough latency that I can run Duck Hunt through it. I can't run... I'm not sure if it'll be fast enough for other light gun games, but Duck Hunt definitely works. I've also added the uh, smoothing filter that's on the RetroTing 2X and the Eon 64 thing. The You can see at the letters, look at the top of Snap. You can see it just sort of... Um, I can make it not doing those artifacts. The smoothing there. I'm not a fan of that look, but some people are. It's just that little smoothing switch right there. I've also, when it's in, so I'm going to set it back to uh, pass-through mode. I've also got a switch here that can force, uh, so let me add component. So we're sending it a 480, 
eye signal from this. So it does pass through 240p and it looks nice and sharp. Um, but let's pass through 480i. So we have 480i pass through. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but when I switch this, flip this switch, it switches from uh, 240p, from 480i to 240p. So this switch lets me, this feature lets me force 240p. So if you're sending a 480i signal, it will make it not alternate fields. So it forces it to be progressive. So if you have a uh, 40p source that's like an emulator that's a line level 240p and it's outputting as 480i, if you enable that feature, it will make it true 240p. So that's a really cool feature that we, if you know you need it, you need it, and that's super hard to come by. Um, I've also, so for the output, like you can see here's component output. It's monitor still set to RGB, so code is wrong. There's composite and S-video output. Uh, it's currently doing RGB output, and I'm running sync on green. I don't have, you can also run RGB HV out of it. Uh, lots of other features. Now it's set to auto mode, but I can, um, let me reconnect the Nintendo 64. There's also, uh, I have these two switches up for the first two switches of the input. So whenever I take these two and I switch this one down, then it's force composite, force component, force composite, force S video, but there's nothing there. So back to composite. Uh, it does do S video in, but I don't have it hooked up for that right now. It does S video composite component output, but I don't have that hooked up right now. Um, but yeah, the that's the features there. There's composite input, S video input, component input. I'm trying to get RGB input working. I'll probably have to have extra hardware, which will add to the cost and the size. Um, component output, S video output, composite output, RGB output, VGA output, and then you can do pass through or line doubling. You can do the smoothing filter. Uh, oh, the notch filter. This was something that uh, Mike Chi found found out on the 7280A. You can manually dive in and adjust the composite video filter for systems like the NES or really off-spec systems. He's been really helpful with that. And then there's that Force 240p switch I was talking about. It'll automatically engage 240p on the output if the 240p on the input was engaged. But yeah, it's a universal anything to anything transcoder. Uh, the one, aside from the big downsides like the bottlenecks, are that it can't do uh, it can't do 40p input. It can't do RGB input without external like transcoder. I'll need a transcoder on the input stage, and it can't. And this bus is a 422 bus, which is like the GameCube and the Wii are 422 buses. It's pretty standard. So with composite and S-video, like converting to composite or to S-video or from composite or from S-video, you, you shouldn't notice it. The bandwidth shouldn't be much. But if you're going like component to RGB or RGB to component, there may be some minor artifacts if you're looking for it, like in the Chroma 422 subsampling. It depends who you ask. For 240p, it shouldn't be that noticeable because it's sampling twice as much, half as much pixels. It's hard to explain. But uh, for 240p, 422, because it's so oversampled, shouldn't be that big of a deal. But 480i composite to, uh, I mean, 480i RGB to component or component to RGB should see some, might see some minor artifacts for high resolution stuff. But yeah, that's currently what it is. It's not using any proprietary features of the Raspberry Pi Pico. So the code will be open source and easily documented so then people can configure stuff. I've also set up some other features like this little switch enables an onboard test pattern. See if I can get that running. Yeah, see, onboard test pattern. Uh, this one enables, one of these enables, um, there we go, that one enables sync on PB and PR, which breaks stuff. And then uh, this one, one of these here, I think it's three. Yeah, enables uh, pedestal 7.5 IRE inputs. Uh, I've got another one here that enables beta inputs. I don't remember which switch I had it on. But, but lots of weird edge case fe features like this. But this is going to be super versatile. It's super universal transcoder. I'm not using any proprietary features of the Pi Pico, so it can be ported to any microcontroller that can do I2C, so you can get a super cheap one. Uh, the whole thing uses, like, a watt, so it's super low power, super low cost, super tiny. It would be really useful for, like, taking composite S video stuff and throwing it on a, on a VGA CRT or 
just simple anything to composite or composite to anything or S video to anything or anything to S video transcoders. It, it'll just be a super useful device to have around. And since it'll be open source, people can take it and put it into whatever form factor or stuff like that they want. Um, I'm working around the limitations of the chip. I've been trying to deal with analog devices, but they're just, they've been a pain. Their customer support is just uh, dreadful. But yeah, that's what I've been working on. I'm really excited. It should be done in the relatively soon future. It's feature complete. Just got to get the, uh, just got to get the code cleaned up, tidied up. It's all working on interrupts. So it'll be nice and documented, easy to work with. So all you tinkerers out there should be able to make something cool out of it. And if you're not a tinkerer, let me know what you see as a cool use for a circuit like this and what kind of stuff we could build it into. Maybe uh, for portables, it'll be cool to run 40p VGA into uh, portables. That'll be awesome. But I could also see it useful as like a little standalone transcoder, uh, especially for like PC CRTs. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Thought I'd just share what I've been up to.